All glories to Amrita and Danvantari, Supreme Divine Healers, may their blessings be with us. Today I am going to translate for you the transcript of a talk by Dr. Jens Bengen, where he talks about some passages from Ludwig Garz's book, Flowing Money. Fließendes Geld in German. And it is uh, especially those parts which are comparing the characters and symbols of the Lord of the Rings to the society in the last few hundreds of years and also the financial system. You can hear the thunderstorm going on in the back. I hope it's uh, a good ambience and not too loud to listen. So, I hope I can do a nice translation. It will not be too bumpy. The Lord of the Rings can be seen as a detailed and precise prophecy about the end of interest rate or tax economy on Earth. The symbolic language of the Lord of the Rings is encoding inner processes, means to say, the workings of consciousness inside man and humanity at large on the background of external historical events between the 19th and 21st centuries. So we can say that Mr. Tolkien with his Lord of the Rings almost had like a divine vision that he's sharing with us how we can transform and transcend the momentary money system which is directly connected to the plutocratic ruling system on this earth whether it's called democracy capitalism or communism or what other names there may be at these times in truth it's rule of tax and interest financial system. It's the monopoly of the fiat money system. So fiat money, for those who are not versed with the terminology, means it's not backed by any real commodity asset or value. It's basically on face value. It's just paper that is believed to have some value. So Tolkien is describing how we can overcome this system by throwing the one ring into the fire in which it was crafted or had been crafted before. That one ring is the ring of Sauron, of course. At the end of the Lord of the Rings, two things come together. The abolition of interest economy which is also ending the domination of that fiat money and as a result of that the complete transformation of mankind. I want to add here that here or there I changed a little bit the words. It's not a word-for-word -word translation of the video of Jens Bengen nor uh, of the book of Ludwig Gartz because I thought it needs a little bit of an improvement as always there is no need in just repeating if you want to read the original you can read the book yourself so that one ring is representing tax and interest rate economy and Sauron is uh, representing the financial elite Saruman interestingly is representing or could be representing the European nationalism and fascism. Aragon represents cosmic justice, divine order. Balrog represents the founding of the Federal Reserve Bank, which is of course not federal, as everyone should know by now. Or we can say it is becoming refederalized, or it became refederalized during the pandemic recently when Trump took over the Federal Reserve, supposedly. And then there is the fight about Helm's Deep, and that is representing the Second World War, which was, and that is another note, uh, organized and funded 
by the same shadow financial elite. They were funding both sides and making gains through the military complex, loans and after that putting everyone into further debt, etc. So that one ring, the interest rate economy, automatically generates a financial elite which is at the end always the profiteer. And then there is a saying that most of you will know. There are signs on the ring which make me feel so down. There's one to enslave all rings, to find them all in time, and drive them into darkness. Forever they'll be bound. There's one to enslave all rings, to find them all in time, and drive them into darkness, forever they'll be bound. We'll come back to that song later. So Hans Joachim Müller, a German gentleman, also pointed out that Mordor can be read in two parts. So Mor, if you switch it, would become Rome, and Dor would be Dor, of course. So. It's all a bit twisted, and the tax economy, the interest rate economy, is constructed to confuse, so that the whole mankind is being driven into debt, and thus becomes dependent on the small financial elite, and not only dependent, but like subservient, enslaved, we can say. So, the one ring is designed to create greed and that is how the interest rate economy is creating irresistible urges or desires and that is to get uh, income without providing any value or valuable work to get assets and also to be able to generate interest on one's treasure so return or income now we come to the orcs. The orcs represent the lower tendencies in our consciousness. That means to try and create an advantage for ourselves on the cost of others. So in the Lord of Rings there are everywhere hosts of orcs that threaten the whole of humanity, which shows that the whole of humanity has to fight with those lower tendencies which are propelled or boosted or strengthened by the same interest rate economy. Now, that one ring cannot be used for a fight against Sauron himself. So similarly, also the Soviet Union communism indirectly serve the same interest rate economy. So it eliminated the Greater Russia as economic rival on the one hand, but it kept capitalistic world in fear and thus generated high returns through the military complex, etc. Then we have to take a look at anti-capitalistic violence, which also has always just served the tax economy, interest economy, because any kind of violence always serves that system because it cannot really be attacked because it has several walls or layers of protection by which it protects itself them being the economic elite the political elite and the so-called scientific elite and I would add also the military and police which is corrupted to protect those criminal elites so the wise ones shy away from that one ring, to carry that one ring and try to take the position of Zauron to rule the world for a better, even to rule the world justly because they know that that one ring could corrupt them. So that means it is futile and not helpful to substitute or take out certain leaders of that financial and other corrupt elites from their positions in the attempt to create a betterment in the world because the 
discrepancies, the maladies, the miseries in this world are being produced by this interest rate economy which is based on a demonic philosophy and not through one or a few bad people. Nevertheless, the wise recognize that the destruction of that one ring would be the only way to save the world. Anyone who looks at the situation in a sober way and consults the inner wisdom in themselves will realize that the tax economy must be abolished if we want to stop the further exploitation of our earthly territories and its populations. So now let us look more closely at the different rings. The three rings of the elves, they point towards three qualities of higher wisdom, which we can use for the benefit of all. And every human, which is inherently a spiritual conscious entity, potentially has these three forms of wisdom. Elrond, he represents empathy, empathic divine wisdom. Then we have Galadriel, I hope the names are the same in English, who is representing the cognitive wisdom. That means also the ability to preconceive future events through careful bird eye perspective and inference, which leads to clarity. And then we have Gandalf, who carries the third ring of the elves and that is discriminating or discerning wisdom. And him being the almost constant companion of the fellowship is pointing towards the importance of this kind of wisdom in our times. Because for clearing the consciousness, we have to learn again to discern what is true from what is untrue, what is authentic from what is unauthentic, what is supporting our integrity and what is destructing it and what is eternal from what is temporary etc. So we can find out that love, truth and peace are the eternal components of our true nature in contrast to emotion, addictive tendencies, egoistic tendencies, destructive tendencies etc. Furthermore what makes us strong from what makes us weak? What makes our life truly rich from that which is actually making us more poor? And that money alone can never make us happy, just to name a few. With this, we can look at the seven rings of the dwarves. The first one is creative power. The second one is motherliness. The third one is power of self-assertion, fourth one is personality, fifth one is the healing power, the sixth one is self-control and the seventh one is self-purification. And those seven rings got lost during the period of uh, the domain of the ring of Sauron, predominantly lost not completely lost. I'm not sure how exactly it was in the story. Then, now we come to the most important part of the video, namely the nine black horsemen. And the interest economy creates, boosts, incentivizes, supports, strengthens those nine dark qualities or negatively dominant tendencies which are also naturally there in our provi system or the provisional identity system, sometimes called false ego. But usually they are just emergency programs which should be in a resting position. But through this monopolistic fiat money system, which is creating so many problems, these nine tendencies are being brought to the forefront in most of the people and being blown up out of proportion to the grotesque and thus are dominating and ruling our social system and living together and also especially 
through perception. Perception control is thought control means mind control, etc. You can listen to David Icke, he's explaining it really nicely, how this works. So, there is one king of the black horsemen, and that is intentional tightening of scarcity, which leads to a state of lacking poverty and hunger, etc. The second of the black horsemen is inimical competition, contrast to friendly competition. Third one is theft, thievery, etc. And the fourth one is profusion, dissipation or wastefulness. And there is a simultaneous dissipation with artificial tightening at the same time, which is being used by the system to create higher prices on the market. For example, by weather manipulation and uh, betting on failures, etc., etc. Then also the insurance companies are complicit in this, so forth. And in the further sense, also the production of waste products or junk goods, which is leading to plant oversufficiency or superfluousness, redundancy, etc., is part of that game. But lastly, this coexistence of wastefulness and scarcity leads to the seventh of the black horsemen to confusion. Like if you have so many products and you cannot even think anymore which one you need and which not and which is good and which is bad and also you're losing time, which is also a very nice game. But it is also being actively used in the form of gaslighting. Like in the recent history with the pandemic of the COVID hoax, which was artificially created crisis where so many so-called authorities were claiming so many contradictory things so that in the end everyone can say that they were not responsible for what happened and the general people remain completely confused and at the same time suffering from the scarcity and the confusion. But the financial elites, of course, they always make the profit. Then we jumped ahead a little bit with the seventh horseman, but here we have actually the fifth one, and that is bribery. I don't think I need to say so much about it, otherwise the video will get too long. Then the sixth one is deception, like with shady contracts and false businesses and so many examples. So the seventh one we already discussed, that was the confusion, and then the eighth one is fear, very important. Without fear, the soul system would not work. And then the ninth one is blame, always blame someone else. Both those deceptive elites using it, and then the victims of it, they are also using the blame, not understanding the real context and their own responsibility, etc., etc. So let us summarize again the nine horsemen, because they are very important to understand where we are now and how we are verrückt or being removed from the divine order and how to come back. So nowadays it is that anyone who is trying to step out of this artificial slave system will be called crazy or verrückt and may even land in psychiatric clinic etc if you're not careful if you're too dangerous for the system they will put you away even though it's them who are actually insane now again the summary of the nine horsemen number one scarcity number two inimical competition third thievery fourth wastefulness five bribery six deception seven confusion or senselessness Eight, fear, which is coming from the forgetfulness of the soul. And nine is blame, which is actually a denial of karma, if we look at it from a deeper perspective. So then, the consciousness of man is being exposed constantly to those nine dark horsemen and tendentially is being driven towards darkness forgetfulness of the soul, of God, of the divine nature, 
how real life could be, what is the purpose of life, etc. Now let's look at the chronological correspondences between the Lord of the Rings and history of the last few hundred years. But that we will do in part number two. Thank you for tuning in. Your comments and questions are most welcome. For the benefit of all, please consider to like, subscribe and share this message with as many people as possible. And also you're welcome to check the links in the description. May the Om Love be with you. Jai Shri Radhe Shyam.